Israel's military is telling some one million residents in Gaza City to evacuate south in the next 24 hours ahead of expected ground invasion against Hamas military forces in the area. As the conflict escalates, the U.S. has begun operating official evacuation flights to get American citizens out of the country. Starting today, at least four charter flights a day out of Israel are expected. Sources telling the AP the State Department estimates 500,000 Americans currently living in the country. Global Guardian is a security company offering protection and evacuation aid to employees and their families worldwide. Since Saturday morning, Global Guardian agents have already completed 18 evacuations to retrieve more than 800 people. Let's bring in CEO Adele Buckner uh, to explain. Um, Dale, you know, I, I imagine the last week has been an incredibly busy one for you. Where do the evacuations stand right now? So, Kiko, we, we continue about every six to eight hours, we will initiate another evacuation. Uh, we do, we have a flight leaving now for Cyprus. Uh, we will continue to utilize the airspace as long as we have it. We are concerned about losing the airspace as the trigger of the IDF entering Gaza. And we do believe that is probably going to happen uh, in the next few days. If that occurs, we have been executing ground movements to Jordan. Uh, we cannot go north as the presence uh, with Lebanon and Hezbollah is real and the threat is real and the fighting is real. We cannot go south to Egypt as there's conflict there. So Jordan is our best bet to the east by ground, and we will continue uh, to kind of ebb and flow to whatever the option is to get our clients out of harm's way. This is a region, region unfortunately, uh, with a history of conflict, and yet you have said that this time around is different in terms of the challenges with your operation. What are you seeing this time? Yeah, I think if you look at the last seven years, typically these would be skirmishes that would last a week. There would be a volley from both sides. After a week or so, there would be some kind of agreement and we'd go back to status quo. That's not going to happen this time. This can go on for weeks to months, if not years. This is a trigger of violence we have not seen. And I think ultimately our message to our client base in the corporate sector and families is uh, don't risk it. It's time to get out. Uh, it is day six. I think if you were pending a decision, it should have been made 72, 96 hours ago. We are now getting later and later in the in the game, if you will. And it does get more difficult as the violence escalates. And make no mistake, both within Israel and the region, to include the West of the United States, you're going to see the violence escalate. And the pace of things is about to escalate materially. What are you hearing from clients on the ground? I mean, this isn't, when you talk about Israel, I mean, this is a, a country that has a, a huge Western presence. We know a lot of tech companies are there, pharmaceutical companies as well. In what, what have the last six days been like for you in, in fielding some of these calls in trying to get your clients to safety? Yeah. Look, I think if if you live in Israel and you live in this environment, you have an expectation and you kind of you expect these things to a certain degree. It is part of day to day life. I do believe that corporate America and the West is realizing this is different and there's going to have to be more people moved out of harm's way. Uh, and let's see what happens. I hope I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, then this will move quicker. We will find our way to a settlement. Uh, I, I hope that's the case. But the reality, I think, on the ground is people are realizing this truly is different and they need to take action that they might not have over the last seven years. Uh, Dale, you know, I realize you don't have operations currently in Gaza, but we have what appears to be a, a humanitarian crisis that's unraveling that Gaza specifically um, has been blocked off from water, you know, fuel, power running out. Now you've got Israeli uh, military calling on evacuations to the south. K k knowing what you know about the region and the challenges of evacuating, period, can you speak to the difficulty of, of what's being asked right now? If we're talking about getting this done within 24 hours before what is expected to be a ground invasion? Yeah, we're talking about 2 million people in an incredibly dense area. Uh, the thought that 1.1 million of them can get up and move in 24 hours and have success at it. When you think about the amount of infrastructure, everyone's seeing the pictures in the film 
of what the destruction looks like inside Gaza. And it is war and it is ugly. And when you think about just the infrastructure challenges of getting around where bridges, bridges have been blown apart, where roads have been decimated, where entire uh, buildings have been crumbled to the ground. When you see that, can you imagine, I've got to move a thousand people through that rubble or around that rubble? Even if there are paths and roadways that are still feasible where you can move and have real freedom of maneuver, you're now going to have to go around areas that have been completely decimated, or at least at some level. That is the challenge, is it's not just looking at a map and going from point A to point B. It is now, what does that terrain look like and how do you navigate it? And it's hard. We're experiencing this now, and we still have relative freedom of maneuver as we're moving all of our clients to Jordan. But this we anticipate, much like Ukraine, much like our evacuations in Afghanistan, this will get much more difficult over time. And anyone in Gaza, of course, as the violence escalates, as the combat operations escalate, this will become more difficult. Yeah, Dale, it's a good reminder to those of us here who've been watching it unfold from afar that this isn't just about getting in the car and then going down the road um, with a straight shot here. You know, we, we spoke to you, Dale, um, early on when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, you talk about the evacuations you had to do in Afghanistan. Um, it's certainly been a busy year or so for you. And I wonder what the conversations are that you're having with your corporate clients about safety and how they're reconsidering where they operate throughout the world. So I think here's really, there, there's two or three key takeaways here. Number one, if you're a CEO or a C-suite member, a board member, geopolitics now matter in a way they haven't in decades. That's number one. Number two, if you think that you're protecting your firm, your people, because you have insurance, travel insurance, or you have a legacy duty of care provider who provides intelligence and alerts and does medical evac, read the fine print of the restrictions. They do not cover, nor do they operate in combat zones, natural disaster, or terrorist attacks, meaning they really have no coverage whatsoever. I think that reality, as you look at the pace of events, global disruptive events, the pace over the last decade is there's more every year, they're increasing in violence, and they're creating more exposure for the tech sector, the finance sector, the manufacturing sector, so on and so forth. Ultimately, these platforms were not built for the world we live in. And if you don't make material changes so that you can operate to deal with this level of violence, you're simply uncovered. And it's a reality that corporate America and the West is facing right now, that there's a real pivot required moving forward. Dale, finally, you mentioned at the top that, that you're expecting the airspace to be completely shut down over the next few days. Um, what are those next few days going to look like for you as you try to get your clients out? Yeah. Simply put, we will pivot. We do have a ground option that we're executing daily right now to Jordan. Uh, we have to hope that the, the Jordanians or you know the Israelis don't cut that off. Uh, it's viable now. I do anticipate between the two of air or ground, we will lose the air option first. If we do, we will simply pivot and we will start running large convoys of 500 plus people at a time. And, and we will execute the two primary routes to the two primary crossing sites, get our clients to Oman, put them in hotels and safe homes in some cases, and then move them commercially from Oman to around the world. How many clients do you still have that need to be evacuated? So right now we have demand for a little over 2,000. A lot of that's come in just in the last 26 hours. So this is moving very quickly. Again, I think a lot of people, we're in day seven. Uh, people have a tendency to, to hesitate to make big decisions. I understand that. Uh, governments are slow to move. If you think about the State Department announcing it's going to now fly four aircraft in today, uh, why does that take till day seven? That calculation in our estimation is incredibly slow. Uh, this should have been moving in 24 to 48 hours. And now you're playing from behind. And ultimately, when you think about that, the movement to get people to the airport now is much more difficult. As, as combat operations escalate, the violence escalates, then the opportunity to move from point A to point B to get to the consolidation point and the airport is now much more difficult, even if the airspace remains open.
Del Buckner, Global Guardian CEO, um, some really important perspective there. Appreciate you joining us again. Um, uh, appreciate the work that you're doing on the ground there. Thank you, Kiko.